you're going out for children's liturgy, if you want to make your way across to the hall. Forsake me not, O Lord my God, be not far from me. Make haste and come to my help, O Lord, my strong salvation. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. You are the Son of God and the Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. You are the Word made flesh, the splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you will own our the Holy One, and you will own our the Lord, you will own our the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, and merciful God, by whose gift your faithful offer you right and praiseworthy service, grant, we pray, that we may hasten without stumbling to receive the things you have promised through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses spoke to the people, Fear the Lord your God, you and your son and the son of your son, by keeping all his statutes and his commandments, which I command you all the days of your life, that your days may be long. Hear therefore, O Israel, and be careful to do them, that they may go well with you, and that you may multiply greatly as the Lord, the God of your fathers, has promised you, in the land flowing with milk and honey. Hear, O Israel, Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. And these words that I command you today shall be on your heart. The word of the Lord. The response, I love you, Lord, my strength. My God, my rock where I take refuge. My shield, my saving help, strength, my stronghold. I cry out, O oh, praise be the Lord. And see, I am saved from my foes. The Lord lives, and blessed be my rock. May the God of my salvation be exalted. The Lord gives great victories to his king, and shows merciful love for his anointed. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, the priests of the former covenant were many in number because they were prevented by death from continuing in office. But Jesus holds his priesthood permanently because he continues forever. Consequently, he is able to save to the uttermost those who draw near to God through him since he always lives to make intercession for them. For it was indeed fitting that we should have such a high priest, holy, innocent, unstained, separated from sinners, and exalted above the heavens. 
He has no need, like those high priests, to offer sacrifices daily, first for his own sins and then for those of the people, since he did this once for all when he offered him up himself. For the law appoints men in their weakness as high priests, but the word of the oath, which came later than the law, appoints a son who has been made perfect forever. The word of the Lord. If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, says the Lord, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him. according to Mark. At that time, one of the scribes came up to Jesus and asked him, which commandment is the most important of all? Jesus answered, the most important is, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. And the scribe said to him, you are right teacher, you have truly said that he is one and there is no other besides him. And to love him with all the heart and with all the understanding and with all the strength and to love one's neighbors oneself is much more than the whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. And when Jesus saw that he answered wisely, he said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of God. And after that, no one dared to ask him any more questions. The Gospel of the Lord. Doctors in their um, work life every so often have to give um, bad news um, to various patients and there's a correlation between the work of a doctor and the work of a priest. This is the doctor is the physician to bodies, the priest is the physician to souls and every so often as a priest we have to preach something that we don't particularly want to, but we feel obliged to in order to present the whole of the teachings of the church, to present the whole gospel. And one of the most difficult um, teachings, I think, is around the area of sin, and in particular, the area of serious sin and uh, less serious sin, or not serious sin, I guess all sin is serious, but uh, to use the classic terms, mortal sin and venial sin, greater sins and lesser sins. And so I hope you appreciate that me talking about this is uncomfortable for me and I'm trying my best to use terminology that is at its most charitable because ultimately it's a very difficult thing. It's a very difficult thing to phrase in a way that is palatable because sin has consequences and inevitably um, when we're talking about such things it can trigger things. So what I would say before I start this is don't get anxious and don't be scrupulous about what I'm saying. So we know that before baptism that we are not able to go to communion because we are not initiated. We are not in that place of grace given to us through baptism. 
as a consequence of baptism, we can receive the Lord in his fullness in the communion uh, of the sacraments of the altar. But when we deliberately do something that is against church teaching and is a serious matter, it's got to be a serious matter, and when we know those two conditions, we know it's serious and we know um, that it's a, a, um, a commandment, when we willingly do something like that, that places us back in that place outside of God's grace. And so we cannot go to communion until we receive through reconciliation, the sacrament of confession, that healing grace. So that's the kind of state of grace that we talk about and we can fall out of the state of grace by deliberately doing something that is seriously wrong. And I guess that's the kind of the, the way that we would kind of put that. Unserious sin is a constant, is a constant cleansing going on through unserious sin, venial sins, to use the classic term, and we receive that absolution at the start of the Mass through application of holy water. These things constantly cleanse the soul um, from venial sin. Those are the kind of classic areas. The Lord is saying to us today, you must love the, whole, the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. And he's saying that's the most important thing, that love of God and neighbor are the two most crucial things. To follow Christ is to keep his commandments. And if you remember that the Lord gave authority to the church through Peter by saying, whenever you bind and loose on earth shall be bound and loosed in heaven. In other words, whatever you implement as church law, God the Father honors that and upholds people to that. And one of the most um, binding laws that the Lord has given us in order to keep us in that state of grace, in that health of Christ, is the holy day of obligation and the Sunday obligation. He gives us those because we need it for our soul. Just as the doctor gives dialysis, chemotherapy, radiotherapy, to preserve the body, the church gives uh, obligations to attend uh, Sunday Mass or Holy Day of Mass in order to maintain that state of grace within us. It's not an optional, it's a serious commitment. And just as if we didn't turn up for dialysis, it would have consequences. So too, if we do not fulfill our obligation, it has serious consequences. That is, if we do it deliberately and we know it's a serious thing. Now, if we are ignorant of those things, then absolutely it's not a serious thing because you always have to do something deliberately for it to be a sin. Any accidental omission or forgetfulness doesn't apply. Also, working in care or when you have a duty of care over someone or if you're working in the NHS, that kind of thing removes that Sunday obligation. But the church always is encourages for those who cannot fulfill their Sunday obligation to at least that week attend a weekday mass. So those are the kind of things that we're talking about. And it's a difficult thing to talk about. It's a difficult thing to preach about. But ultimately, it's there, given to us, to keep us in a state of grace, to keep us in the life of God, to keep us alive in Him. Like I say, it's always only in the condition that we know it and we choose it. If either of those things are missing, then it's not serious and we continue to go to communion. However, the last caveat that I would put, us, put around of all of that is like, if we know this teaching and we tell ourselves, oh, it's not true, then you're going in a serious place of uh, culpable ignorance. You're going in a place of difficult moral ground and that's between you and God because ultimately I can't enter a person's heart and clarify any more than what I'm saying today at least that's my position I have to say this thing I'd say once a year just to get the as it were the ballpark 
correct out of duty to souls. And like I say, I don't like doing it. I think one of the things that we remember is God is mercy, God is tenderness, God is love. But he does have rules and he does have ways like we heard today. So I hope you take that kind of in the spirit that it's given just as a prescription. It's in really terrible handwriting, but that's, that's the way it's given to us. And um, we'll pray for each other that ultimately um, the difficulties that we have spiritually and in journeying with God are resolved through his grace, through his mercy for each of us. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. We open our hearts to God our Father, asking for all of our needs this day. Let us pray for all who profess themselves Christians, that in fastening our eyes on Christ, we may be led to unity. Lord, in your mercy. Let us pray for the political, industrial, and commercial administrations throughout our planet, that our material and economic organization may reveal good stewardship of the gifts God has provided. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Let us pray for all convicted prisoners and for victims of their crimes, for all who are eaten up with hatred or jealousy, for those who are finding it impossible to forgive their enemies. Lord, in your mercy. Let us pray for the homes and families represented here, for our loved ones from whom we are separated by distance or death, for a deepening of love towards each other in all our relationships. Lord, in your mercy. Mary faithfully loved God and her neighbour. Let us join our prayers with hers. Hail, Hail Mary, full, full of, of grace, grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And in the silence of our hearts, we pray for any needs known to us personally. Glorious God, hear these, the prayers of your children, and grant them in accordance with your will, through Christ our Lord.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, become for you a pure oblation, and for us a holy outpouring of your mercy through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God through Christ our Lord. For through his paschal mystery he has accomplished the marvelous deed by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death, summoning us to the glory of being now called a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, people for your own possession, to proclaim everywhere your mighty works, for you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, took the chalice and once more giving thanks he gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins do this in memory of me mystery of faith. We eat this bread and drink this cup. 
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Terence Patrick, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Saviour's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. You will show me the path of life, the fullness of joy in your presence, O Lord.
Let us pray. May the working of your power, O Lord, increase in us, we pray, so that renewed by these heavenly sacraments, we may be prepared by your gift for receiving what they promise through Christ our Lord. Save the best to last. One thing that people do get scruples over is attending on Sunday Mass or Holy Days of Obligation when they are sick. Um, there's no obligation if you are sick or if you have something contagious which you could spread to the rest of the community. And the other thing that people get scruples over is if you're a million miles away from a church while you're on holiday, the church does not expect us to trek a million miles to church. All it asks of us is a reasonable effort. If it's an unreasonable effort to get to a church whilst you're on holiday, the obligation falls away. Hope that helps. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thank you.